While we've been speculating what Bethesda will be showing at their E3 2019 show since they confirmed they would be attending, Bethesda Todd Howard puts a damper on more the Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield details. During the Elder Scrolls 25th anniversary, the director of Bethesda, Tom Howard, shared that the Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield will not be a part of their E3 2019 lineup. During the event, Howard said, Before everyone asks, please be patient, it's going to be a long time. It's not something we're going to be talking about at E3 either, or these games this year. It was at last year's E3 when both games were confirmed to be in development, while their Save the Date tweet image includes a star-studded hashtag BE3 and a dragon flying in the background looks like they were not teasing more Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield. Only releasing last year, Dead Cells fast gained its own community of players who enjoyed its roguelike features and gameplay. Motion Twin are continuing to develop content for Dead Cells. In an interview with Jewel Shockers and Motion Twin at PAX East 2019, the producer and studio head Steve Philby discussed its overall success and what their plan is with the title. With their recent release of the free DLC update Rise of the Giant, which launched on PC and Switch, Philby expressed that they are not planning on stopping anytime soon when it comes to new content, also sharing that a new update is in progress, with an estimated release of this summer, as well as new levels that will release sometime this year. As well as sharing new details about upcoming content, Philby also talked about the new platform debuted by Google called Stadia. It looks like the developer is all on board for this new technology when it comes to gaming, stating it was definitely something we're looking into and that we are excited by the prospects of what Google Stadia would bring. Developers of the medieval action RPG Kingdom Come Deliverance have shared new details for their upcoming DLC, A Woman's Lot, that focuses on the adventure of the character Teresa and is the largest chapter yet. The upcoming premium DLC A Woman's Lot for Kingdom Come Deliverance will allow players to take on the role of Teresa who not only gains her own story that takes place before the attack, but gains access to weapons and even her own part of the map. Teresa's story although continues throughout the ambush of Scalette, her priority in the aftermath is to take care of the wounded that have managed to flee from the event. According to a recent interview with Iron Lord's podcast, Warhorse PR manager Tobias Stoll Stilwix outlines some of the features players will expect to experience in the new chapter, which includes a new dog companion named Tinker. The dog has its own set of abilities which you can level up, including sense of smell. This will help in sniffing out the enemies that cross your path. But don't expect the dog to stay law if he isn't treated well. The ability obedience will determine if your sidekick will continue to follow you. Praising, feeding and keeping the dog from getting continually attacked by those who pose a threat will also play a part in your budding canine friendship. Kingdom Come Deliverance recently announced the Royal Edition which will release on May 28th for PS4, Xbox One and PC. This will include the base game plus all previously released content and the upcoming A Woman's Lot. The DLC will also release on May 28th. It's not been long since Stadia was announced by Google at GDC 2019, sharing a new gaming streaming platform set to allow players to play on a variety of devices. However, according to the developer, directors of Obsidian, Tim Kane and Leonard Boyatsky, Stadia may not be the ones to set this type of platform in motion. In an article by DualShock, as directors of the sci-fi RPG The Outer Worlds talked about the future of gaming, when asked at PAX East about the new Stadia platform, Tim Kane explained, this is the direction that gaming was headed, saying that I think something like this is inevitable, but I'm curious if we're there yet. While this, in Kane's opinion, is where the industry is going in terms of what technology can handle at this point, there might need to be a catch up. Lenin Borowski also had his two cents on the matter expressing, I just remember when people tried to do online gaming before it was time for it. People try to do things on the internet just in general and everything crashed and burned. Five years later, everyone is doing it. Like Tim said, streaming will happen is just who knows if it's the right time yet. It definitely seems like Obsidian are open to streaming games, but which company will lead this change is still uncertain. If you've been wondering what free games are coming for PlayStation Plus this April, well wonder no further as they reveal a couple of games that are free this month. These include Deck 13's action sci-fi RPG The Surge and the adventure survival Conan Exiles. The Surge takes on a Souls-like genre, but revolves around using an exoskeleton to fight enemies. Choose to upgrade your suit as you level, giving an array of possibilities, focusing on melee combat and weapons that can slice off limbs, dismember anyone that gets in your way. Conan Exiles will send players on a brutal survival journey where you will need to do everything you can to endure hot deserts and the freezing north. 
gather materials, build shelter, hunt for your food, defending yourself and live out your days in exile. Both of these titles will be available from April 2nd to May 1st for PlayStation Plus subscribers. Celebrating the release of the Wild Appalachia and Survival Mode beta, Bethesda are launching two double XP weekends for Fallout 76 this April 2019. How will you spend your double XP weekends? There's questing, crafting, or even taking on the ferocious Scorch Beasts to earn double the usual experience points during your ventures out in the Appalachia. The first weekend has been announced by Bethesda, which starts on April 4th for Survival Mode. The second weekend starts on April 25th for both Adventure and Survival Mode. The Wild Appalachia update, which launched earlier last month, adding the new boozy crafting system, which players can learn to brew a range of alcoholic beverages with some interesting effects. The survival mode introduced new competitive PvP rules where all teammates or even group mates are automatically are treated as hostile to each other by default. Publisher Big Ben Interactive and developers Cyanide Studio have announced Paranoia Happiness is Mandatory, described as a darkly humorous CRPG. The newly announced game is based on the tabletop Paranoia originally released in 1984. The title follows a strange world where citizens of the Alpha Complex are under the rule of the friend computer that puts joy, cheerfulness and cleanliness above all else and have been cloning its residents. The title has been adapted into a CRPG where questioning the almighty is grounds for termination. Doing anything including overstepping the red zone clearance level will end up with dire consequences. In this game, you'll be responsible for leading a crack team of troubleshooters whose job is to track down traitors that are causing chaos to stop them and ultimately shoot them. While the friend computer watches your every move, rewarding you for a swift solution or will punish you if anything you do is seen as treason. Paranoia Happiness is Mandatory will release on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC in 2019. It was only last week that we got a reveal for Borderlands 3 at PAX East 2019, but now a launch date of September 13th on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and it will be an exclusive to the Epic Games Store on PC. It looks like the Epic Games Store has snapped up another exclusive on PC and this time it's the newly announced action shooter Borderlands 3. Upon launch, the title will be exclusive to the Epic Games Store for six months, meaning if you want to choose another platform, you'll need to wait until April 2020. But due to the announcement that its exclusivity at launch for PC, many have taken to the Steam platform to have their voices heard. In an effort to draw attention to the fact that many fans of the Borderlands series are not quite thrilled that Borderlands 3 will be an exclusive at launch for the first six months, it has resulted in review bombing previous titles, leaving masses of negative reviews to express the disappointment in not gaining the next installment on Steam. However, some are also leaving positive reviews to express their love of the game and not to be swayed by the reviews that are bombing the games based on the recent news. While this does bring attention to the consumer opinion, simply downvoting a game that was well received may not be the way to go. Review bombing is not something new to the Steam platform. Just last month, Valve introduced a way to deal with a problem with a system where a team of humans will diligently sift through reviews that are picked up by an automated program that picks out suspicious entries. What do you think of the response from Borderlands fans? What are your thoughts on the exclusivity to Epic? Let us know in the comments below. Well, that's it for the week in the wikis. Please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supportive benefits. And bunny writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us for news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness. Follow us on social media for all the latest and greatest. The more followers we get, the larger of the army of the Fexes grows.